Trump is having severe impact on the Somali population. It is encouraging that there are so many partners here and also so many representatives of Somali ministries and organizations that are working on this problem. And it is only through strong partnership at all levels that we believe this critical risk to the Somali population can be addressed. Many of the people in this room, uh, including certainly the government, humanitarian organizations, the United Nations, have been sounding the alarm about the impending drought and potential famine since early last year. But there has been there have been many competing demands in the global system, and it has been a challenge to get the necessary attention. So we're encouraged that the Somali government, through this meeting and many other recent uh, actions, is drawing further focus to the urgent needs of the Somali people. Also encouraged that uh, on his visit uh, to New York and participation in High Level Week, for the UN General Assembly, that uh, His Excellency uh, President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud drew further attention to the needs of the Somali people, also had an opportunity to discuss this topic with uh, the UN Secretary General, not just in terms of urgent humanitarian requirements, but also the longer term environmental climate impact uh, sources uh, of today's challenges. I want to speak just briefly uh, about uh, funding, about the scaled-up response, and about the enabling environment. First, on the funding. As we will hear further, there has indeed been a significant scale-up in funds, thanks to generous contributions from international partners, in order to address uh, the drought impact. But we must be clear-eyed that these funds came quite late during the course of 2022, which has made it more difficult to respond to the requirements uh, of the affected Somali population. We also must be clear-eyed that the drought conditions are likely to continue. There are certainly projections indicating that they will continue for many more months. So even with the available funding, we know that much more will be required and we must continue to appeal to international partners and others to offer generous support. Secondly, in regard to the scale-up, and again, we'll hear more about this, there have been significant increases in the response by, of course, UN humanitarian agencies, but also by more than 200 Somali humanitarian NGOs and local partners and more than 75 international non-governmental organizations. So the scale of and what needs to be done and where there may be gaps that we need to work together as partners uh, to fill. Uh, finally, uh, in regard to the enabling environment, it's incumbent on all of us to make it as easy as possible to reach the people in need. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister spoke of streamlining processes, and indeed, uh, we're hopeful that there can be even further progress in ensuring uh, rapid clearance of uh, tax exemptions to permit uh, arrival of humanitarian uh, supplies, um, also perhaps additional measures to support uh, transport of assistance across uh, borders into Somalia, and we look forward to continuing to work on that. Uh, clearly there are still many Somalis who have not been accessed by international and Somali assistance, and we must continue to work together to reach everyone who is in need. Once again, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, thank you for convening this important meeting, keeping this group uh, focused on these issues. We welcome the key roles that have been played by the Special Envoy. 
uh, by the Ministry of Environment and uh, Climate Adaptation, by SODMA, uh, by the relevant ministries, uh, and the good cooperation with the federal member states. And we look forward to continuing to be your close partners in this critically important endeavor. Thank you. Thank you.